I'm Piers Linney and today I'm focusing on startups and the reason for that is because I've been working for several several months now actually on a piece of content and it's a very much a response to the questions I'm often asked and uh, the advice that's sought from me about how you start a business and how you raise money to do that. So more of that later, I'll cover that in a different video in the near future. But one recurring theme is how does somebody, how do you raise money to start a business? Now you may have the capital, you may be able to raise venture capital, but in many cases people just, they don't understand how you go about it, who you should approach first, what the process is and what the options are. So this video, it's a short video about where you should really think about looking for that finance. So let's get into it. So let's keep this simple. I, I approach this in a, a model of concentric ring. So in the middle, it's really simple. It's about really very strong personal relationships. And as you move out from the center, you begin to have to interact with people who, they don't know you from Adam, and they'll begin to do a huge amount of work and due diligence on you and the business idea. So at the middle, at the core of these concentric circles are people that know you extremely well. These are typically people that, that love you. So you can have an idea in the shower, trot downstairs, talk to your, your family, your friends or siblings and say, I've got an idea, I want to start a business. I need a bit of funding to get things going just to start to test a hypothesis. And those people, they will obviously be interested in the idea to make sure it's not completely uh, left of field, but they're really investing in you. They believe in you, they believe in the vision and they're willing to perhaps put a, a small amount of capital at risk to support you on the beginnings at least of that journey. Now, as you move outside of that, now you may be, initially you can start there and you, you have your idea, you may be just start the ball rolling, but you realize that you may need more finance. And then you have to move outside of that first circle. And this might be people who are one or two removed from you. It might be neighbors, um, colleagues, former colleagues, acquaintances, um, friends even. And you need more capital. So you might be needed to raise, you know, 50, 100,000 pounds or dollars. And this is where you start to, people people start to ask you questions. So you need to be more ready for those conversations and to have the answers. And different video, but very much you need to have, by this point, put together some kind of business plan. But the point is, when you get out to this ring, they're gonna to start to ask more questions. They're gonna to start to ask, well, depending on how much money they're putting at risk, What's the idea? You know, can I lose my money? Are there any tax schemes that can you know, sort of mitigate any potential loss and improve any gain? So in the UK, it could be the Enterprise Investment Scheme, which gives investors 30 or 50% back if it's the SEIS scheme. They get loss relief if things don't go to plan. And also after three years, just three years, they don't pay any capital gain. So that starts to, um, those kind of schemes start to impact the way in which people behave towards investments. So this ring now, they are people that they still, they still know you in that sort of universe of people who they know who you are. And you know, it's reasonably, a reasonably straightforward process to raise money. They're gonna ask questions, look at the outline plan, maybe read a, a short document, and then hopefully proceed. Now, as you move outside of that ring, you start to get into people who don't really know you. These might be people who've been introduced to you by somebody you know. These could be people who are, they've got a bit of money, they've got some spare cash, they could be angel investors. And this might be where you're looking to raise, you know, 50,000 pounds or dollars plus, you're into the sort of hundreds of thousands of pounds now. And these people, because they don't know you, they're clearly going to be very interested in you and who you are, your capabilities and your background, but they're gonna to start to want to look at a business plan. They're gonna to wanna to start to understand how you're gonna spend the money, what the plan is, what the downside is, what the upside is, what's the market. And this is where you really do need to have a business plan or at least some kind of presentation that covers the basis that a plan 
should normally cover. And at this point, in this, this ring now, they're gonna to start to do due diligence. They're gonna perhaps uh, bring a lawyer in, maybe an accountant. They may do some commercial due diligence. They may have experience of the sector. They may understand the sector or the background to the business you want to start in many ways more than you do. So you begin to ask your questions. And the beauty of questions is, is that if someone's interested, they'll ask questions. If they're not interested, they won't even ask questions. And if you can make, you know, give them sensible answers, you can shut down the reasons for them not to invest. It's a sales process. And that's how you begin to close down investors, by making them feel more comfortable about what it is they're getting into. Now at this point, this ring, you may have more than one investor, more than one angel investor, and it could become complicated there. So what you want to really do is find a, a lead or a what they call a cornerstone investor, somebody that's gonna set the terms, set the terms of the investment agreement, and hopefully others will follow. And people tend to as well. If somebody else has invested, others tend to, they like that, they see someone's done some work, especially if they know the industry, and they're more likely to follow. Now, if you move outside of that ring, then you get into maybe angel networks, uh, angel syndicates, a much more professional, it's almost, it's almost akin to venture capital, a very different approach. They're gonna look at you clearly as a leader, but they'll appreciate that you may not always run this business. So they start to look more at the plan. Now, Investors should always really back the founders because they're the key, but they are gonna look very long and hard at your business plan. They're gonna to start to conduct some serious due diligence. So at the beginning, somebody, the, the friends and family, people who love you, they'll invest in an idea, a sort of a vision. Outside of that, they'll invest in a, a sensible business idea. Outside of that, you get into angels. They wanna see a proper business and a business plan. Ideally, you've done some research, you've got a product, an MVP, a prototype, or a test version of your, of your service. They can see the business in action. You hopefully got some customers, you've proven there's some product market fit, but you haven't really scaled the business yet. You haven't really got enough customers yet to prove your business hypothesis, but you're getting there. As you get into the angels, angel networks, professional syndicates, they wanna see more. They wanna see more proof of the business potential, the upside. Investor typically at this stage are looking for you know, five, 10, 20X, depending on the business and the sector and their particular investment preferences. But you're also looking like it's a much longer process. You know, Your family will say yes or no over dinner. Your friends may be after a week or two. These processes can take you know, several months. Now simplistically, if you move outside of that ring, you start to get into venture and venture capital. Now, you can't just have an idea in a shower and go and knock on the door of a large venture capital firm. You can if you know them, but typically they're not gonna take that call or that meeting. They wanna see a business that is, it's proven in many ways, it's product market fit. It's showing that the marketing works as a route to market. There's a solid go to market strategy and the marketing is beginning to work. And you can show there's a financial model, not just one in Excel. There's a model whereby if you invest this much money, then they can see a return. They can see the growth potential. They can see how that converts into customers and revenue and profit, or at least at this point, gross profit over time. And also you can show them that there's a trajectory. There's a market opportunity. There's a real problem you're solving that there's demand. But in this ring, they're gonna to start to ask serious questions. They may bring in third party experts to do due diligence, commercial due diligence. They'll certainly have lawyers. There'll be a much longer negotiation about the shareholder agreement. They may be doing very deep financial due diligence, due diligence on you, your team, the market, the whole kit and caboodle. And those processes, venture capital, can take you know, six months, even 12 months. Doesn't matter what kind of money you're raising, it typically takes longer than you think it's going to, and it's always gonna be frustrating. So that's a very quick model to think about where you're gonna raise your money. It depends at what stage your business is at, it depends what you've proven, it depends what the risk is, but as you move out from the center, those concentric rings, from friends and family to professional, perhaps even institutional investors, there's more complexity, there's more due diligence, there's more legal negotiation, there's more for people to lose essentially. So you and your business need to be in the right stage and in the right shape to have a serious conversation with the investors on the outside rings. But my advice is take the business as far as you can with whatever resource you have. It might be your own financial resources, it might be just research and a very, very simple product you test with some customers that are close to you. It might be family and friends investing in your business, but take it as far as you can before you start to seek external finance, money from people who don't know you, because equity is gold dust, and you don't want to give equity away unless you really have to. If any sum of finance you raise, the more value you create, the less equity the investors get in your business. So for any given amount, if your company's worth 
the hundred thousand pounds on paper or a million, then the percentage the investors get goes down. And it's really important in the early days to try and avoid excessive dilution. And investors recognize this too. They want you to be motivated.